the good lady from the 30th, Representative Kushmar. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> it is my honor to stand before you today to reflect on our past. As was stated, on February 19, 1942, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed an executive order. This order sent 120,000 Japanese Americans to internment camps. 12,000 of those Japanese Americans were from our state, two of whom were my friends. I'd like to read you a little story about my friends, Harry and Charlene Honda. Please proceed. Harry's father came to America in 1913 as a teenager. He started a farm. When he was 21, he returned to Japan and married Harry's mother. She was all of 16 years old and brought her to America. The couple, with the help of a friendly lawyer, leased a farm and became successful. In 1931, their fourth child, Harry, was born in America. The farm did well until that fateful day, December 7, 1941. On that day, their world changed forever. Just like hundreds of others with a background like theirs, Harry's family lost everything. It was World War II overseas. Their friends and neighbors were treated in this country as though they were our enemies. In reality, they were farmers, successful business people, good stewards, and good neighbors. When the executive order was signed in 1942, Harry boarded that train, the train with the shades drawn, on a very hot journey to his camp. His wife-to-be, Charlene, also boarded a train to her camp. Her family lived in the Santa Anita racetrack in a, a stall, a horse stall. A family of six living for years in a horse stall. But Harry had a great outlook. They eventually were released from the camps. Harry's family went back to become successful farmers. Harry, you may have met him when he joined uh, well, first he joined the Navy, the U.S. Navy, and fought in the Korean War. Can you imagine a Japanese American fighting in the Korean War for America for four years? He then joined the airlines. You may have met him when you flew on Northwest Airlines. You may have known his wife, Charlene. She got a chemistry degree. She was a very successful teacher in the Federal School District. I was very blessed to have Harry, his wife Charlene, their son Bruce, and their daughter in law Susan stand on a street corner with this Polish Catholic American to run for the state legislature. Now, I may not be here if my family had not immigrated. Harry and his wife Charlene would stand on a street corner wearing red, white, and blue. 75-ish years old, and Bruce and Susan, and I never knew who people were honking at. They were honking at Charlene because they loved her as a teacher. They were honking at Bruce because he was a wonderful man and very, very joyful. And they honked at Harry. He was a wonderful, wonderful man. Can you imagine people in their 70s standing on a street corner early in the morning when it's pouring down rain? I was very blessed. Many of our Japanese American soldiers are the most American decorated, de most decorated Americans in history. More than 9,000 Purple Hearts were awarded to these soldiers. Thankfully, with the passage of time, our country has been able to recognize its mistakes. And Madam Speaker, I'd like to read from a president from another war in another time. Please proceed. President Abraham Lincoln. President Lincoln said that all of us at all times remember American citizens are brothers of a common country and should dwell together in the bonds of fraternal feeling. We need to remember that. We are blessed in this country by our diversity. We are blessed that all of us came from other countries. We are blessed to have people in this country 
that don't look alike, that don't think alike. They're the brightest and the smartest. They come from other countries. They come to make this country great. Only in America can this happen. And Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, may I read from the Civil Liberties Act of 1988 when President Ronald Reagan signed? Please proceed. It's important to remember that the excluded individuals of Japanese ancestry suffered enormous damages, both material and intangible. And there were incalculable losses in education and drought training, all of which resulted in significant human suffering for which appropriate compensation has not been made. For these fundamental violations of the basic civil liberties and constitutional rights, of these Jap individuals of Japanese ancestry, the Congress apologizes on behalf of the nation. President Reagan reflected on the indignity that these individuals suffered. Only in America can we survive our diversity, our indecision, our fear, and make this country stronger. Only in America. May God bless our Japanese-American friends May God bless my friends and may God bless America.